prepped for our second matchup between Starhorn Royal Club and Invictus Gaming. Of course, IG taking the first one pretty handily. And Blank now checking towards this top side. It's a dangerous part of the map if you were watching our first matchup here tonight. But not going to yield any results this time. And Blank able to get that ward down. Corn hanging out by his mid lane turret. And the lane swap looks to have already been instigated here by our IG members. Yeah, so it looks like they will be on the top side of the map, not looking for the 2v2 this time around. Hecarim looking to pick up a camp. He hasn't picked up any other items apart from the flask because that means he wants the 300 gold cloth armor to come through. And we see mm. a potential late invade coming here through from Zetai as well as Kikau as they go for it. Yeah, pretty interesting. Of course, no one towards this top side. I believe that they are going to be seen by this ward here as well. So they see four members towards that blue buff. So probably going to be a steal, but some vertical jungling just to result from it. Yeah, and no freeze will be secured in the top side of the map because they won't be able to get back there in time. Meanwhile, Krugs were taken down by Name and Zero. So he's not. they're not going to be able to get any, I guess, advantages from the freeze either, but they will have a quicker level too. And maybe the ability to push turrets a lot quicker. Because, yeah, well, of course, it is a Jinx. Yeah, Jinx does tend to eat these turrets pretty quickly. Cola able to take down these Raptors here on his own. That was the fastest full clear of that red side of the jungle I think I've ever witnessed. As four members are going to be able to take those three camps, three camps down very quickly. Zatai now following Kukau around here. Standard sort of lane swap mechanics coming through the jungle follows as Rookie has taken a lot of damage from corn. Yeah, he certainly has, but he has those potions available, so he'll be able to eat through some cookies. He'll be fine. Of course, Delicious. kids, don't try that at home. They're not as good for you as they are in-game. Yeah, that is true, and that's why you don't buy too many cookies, ladies and gentlemen, because, of course, you know, you have too many, you run into problems. You don't have enough items, that sort of stuff. But corn is going to get caught up there. But everything's going to be A-OK. -okay. And you mentioned the fact that this is probably going to be a farm lane, and I should probably stop talking about exa every ability that goes off because they're going to be throwing stuff at each other over and over again. Yeah, they certainly are. And it's going to be very back and forward because the harass that comes out of Vlad, probably just as good as that out of Rise. And honestly, it's going to be a very low interaction lane. Expect maybe a four and a half minute back to come through for a rookie just to get an early tier because as I said kill potential very low if he can get this lane to reverse wouldn't be surprised to see him go shop yeah but the fast push is on here on the bottom side Name with that Gatling gun able just to make sure that this turret kills as many creeps as possible before taking this one down it's going to be a four minute outer turret and it's been a long time since we've seen a turret be taken down this quickly in any league, but it's going to be perfectly done here as well with the wave pushing back towards Royal Club as that Global Gold already helping out the Starhorn members. Yeah, and it, you see the opposite in the top side of the map, a complete freeze coming through. If they rotate Name quick enough, he might just be able to run in there, shove that one in with his boots to pick up. My goodness, Berserker's Greaves already. Yeah, well, Berserker's Greaves, once again, very cost-efficient buy. The thrift shopping, once again, coming yeah. out very big. This is the thing. Always trust Daname. I'm learning. If I go back and I've got a thousand gold, I'm buying boots too. That is just what I'm going to be doing from now on. As a little bit of a gank to come through from Kitty's, just looking for a dredge line on his way in. As got both summoner spells. My goodness, that is definitely the power of Nautilus. Having CC on more than four abilities is pretty silly. Yeah, it certainly is. Oh, actually, his W doesn't have any. My bad. Unfortunate, of course. That would probably be a little bit broken, but. Zero is going to land the Death Sentence here onto Kitties. The flayback at the same time as the Chomp is not going to quite find the Nautilus. Riptide not going to find Jinx, though, and he does make it to that brush there as well. Zatai is actually coming towards his top side as Kid eats a rocket. But while this is all going on, Zatai, he pushed out as the back comes through from Kid uh, Rookie. So a little bit later, but he will be able to go back, grab that tier. Also has enough for another Mana Crystal. Hecarim, he's got a very deep freeze in that bottom lane and has picked up a sizable CS advantage, not to mention all the experience that's coming across as well. That's horrible news. Zatai actually had to burn his teleport to get down there. And he's in real danger because this might put Kohler a couple of levels ahead and we've seen what Hecarim can do when he's ahead. 
Yeah, well, this is the thing, and this is a champion that you want to keep down. This is a champion that you want to punish in this laning phase, not provide with a perfect lane to freeze here as well, as he's able to use that Rampage to clear out a lot of these creeps under the turret as Rookie heading back towards this mid lane. Of course, Vlad going to head back, pick up that Revolver. Pretty standard stuff. Both of these mid laners pretty reliant on that first item, the tier coming through here for Rookie with that Sapphire Crystal, crystal going towards the Catalyst, you have to think, and that... Uh, Revolver coming through as well. But yeah, Cola, 28 to 7, as far as that farm is concerned, is massive here for the Hecarim. Yeah, it certainly is. And you can see they're trying to make a pillow out of a jacket. No easy task. <laughs> <laughs> uh, denim isn't that comfortable, ladies and gentlemen. That is what we've just found out here today. Oh, mate. Oh, He's going to get dredge line. That was beautiful work, but the. Dark passages from zero. But you so see how much damage that comes through from the Nautilus passive coupled with that passive on the Sentinel. Yeah. Just a lot of percentage health damage coming through there. So was nicely done. Chunking out a Jinx is always going to be a good thing. And we see that they're not finished. Actually, Kitty's doing a lot of work here to zero as well. He's trying to peel for this Jinx. Not going to be stunned up just yet here by Kitties, but the Ignite's been put down, forcing the flash out of zero as Name trying to get some damage back here as well. But... This is a very frightening lane to go up against coming out of IG. And this is the thing about Nautilus. He's just so Big. gosh damn tanky. <laughs> Especially with that Titan's Wrath. With that W up, does so much extra damage. And you also just don't want to hit him. You're like, oh, he's got a shield. What's the point? But he just does so much work. Nice dodge out of the way of the Pierce there by Name. And Zero is able to get back into this lane as well. Does still have... Actually, out of consumables completely here. So, the rest of the damage is going to stick as Korn able to pick up a blue buff here. And you have to think that's probably more just to keep up with that experience level in that mid lane. CDR is just so important of Vladimir and wants to be able to shove out the lane as quick as possible. So, I understand exactly why that one's going over. I wouldn't have got that in solo queue, I don't reckon. I don't think you would have been solo queue either. But uh, then again, I can't get a blue buff of Zerath in solo queue, so... <laughs> that is a very good point. <laughs> As Rookie, very low on mana, he's going to go and pick up his own blue buff here that Kakao is going to provide for him. Of course, this Udia has been power farming this jungle, trying to get to that Cinder Hulk as quickly as possible. Just... That's what Udyr does. He kills monsters. This is what Kakao does on a lot of junglers as well. If he feels the lanes are going neutral, he tries to make himself a threat as much as possible and look for him to just roam around, clear out as much vision as he can and try and get busy. As we see, Rookie, he's trying to shove out now that he's got that blue buff, keep the tiers stacking. And at the same time, he's weaving in some nice harass. Once again, winning out this lane quite handily. Yeah, he's got more than a 10 CS advantage here. Like... 14 at this stage, and Korn really struggling. Misses another caster creep as Royal Club look to try and put some pressure here on this Rise. Who's... This is a Ignite Rise as well. We often see these Rises pick up a whole lot of defensive summoners. Oh, oh my goodness, that Fates Call was stunning. It came a little bit late. The damage went through. Oh, right. And well, it, didn't, it didn't kill him. So Did it? it looked more fancy. So it was a completely wasted Fates Call is what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know. It was just nice to grab him. It's like, I'm here for you. It's okay. Despite Hold me. whether or not it was worth it. Hold me, Callista. <laughs> <laughs> I'm scared. Oh, my goodness. Thank goodness I didn't start singing Elton John. Corn able to farm up underneath this turret, though, relatively effectively. I think they're waiting for me to sing. I'm not going to do it. I'm waiting for you. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. But as we move towards this one, of course, <laughs> my goodness. Oh, now we're going to be backing in that top lane. And Gragas just traversing this map as well. Haven't seen too much out of Blank's Grungle so far this game. Yeah, and that's a little bit disappointing because you would think with all the early CC that is available on Gragas's kit, could be able to couple up with some of these CC-less lanes. Or maybe even the heavy CC lane in the top, but across the board every lane right now in IG's favor. Yeah, and I mean, Name has managed to go back and pick up that BF Sword. Does have some potions there as well. Rookie's going to find Blank here. There's the explosive cast to come through as Korn was going to get turned around upon there, but Rookie flashes over the wall, answering flash by Korn. The Ignite not going to be enough, and that's first blood for the Vladimir. That's going to turn this lane exactly where Royal Club wanted. Yeah, so he's able to grab the first blood, maybe even more importantly, able to get some damage down on the turret. 
And you see the focus coming through My there. My goodness, Khan is, he's a man on a mission As right now. Kikau runs through, the champions are like, oh no, he might attack us. No, no. just wants the minion waves. True Udyr fashion. Yeah, the box is going to come through here as well. There's the Death Charge, immediately gets the ultimate out. Is the Dark Passage going to be available there from Zero as well? Mostly just for the shield and Kid. He's not really worried about the champions. He just wants to take down the creeps that were getting smacked on by the non-existent turret. And Korn going to clear out this wave here as well. Has evened up that CS, but Nami's going to fall down in the top side. Not sure why uh, Royal Club went back in on that one. Zero, you are most definitely dead, and a double kill for Kid. How that happened, I have no idea, because Royal Club, they got out. Aren't they supposed to just back there? Yeah, they certainly look like that's what they should have done. It might even mean a turret coming across here for IG. That one already being prepped quite far. And we saw how well Kid was able to do when he was behind last game. Yeah. Just wait for the team fight, start taking over. This time coming out of lane with a 2-0-0. Not to mention getting the early turret advantage over Name. It's going to spell all kinds of bad things. Of course, Jinx will scale superbly into the late game, but we've seen Kid, apparently he just doesn't care that the build isn't fantastic anymore, still wants to go for it. Yeah, and this is exactly what you said about Kakao's going to find people in the jungle and then kill them. Of course, as soon as Zero sort of came around, their rookie now under a lot more pressure, and my goodness, Korn, you got a bit of damage now. Yeah, it certainly does. So Korn, he's able to start winning this lane after the first item pickup. Of course, Rise. Just needs to can keep needs to continue scaling. Can keep is a mixture between keep and continuing, <laughs> but not a word. I do like it though. It's like you're making sure that we get everything out of what you're trying to say. Um so yeah, he's looking to be non interactive for another ten, fifteen minutes until that roller has been stacked up. But Satai is the one V one going down in the bottom lane. Satai just saying, Okay, I've I've done my buttons now and there's not really much more I can offer you there. Cola and <laughs> we'll just head back. <laughs> Oh, goodness me. But I like to think that every now and again, Zatai just gets sick of being a tanky top laner. You can see <laughs> it in the pickaxe built. And yeah. just decides he's going to try and kill someone, even though he can't. Oh, Dark Passage is going to come out there. Kakao, the Chompers are going to do some work, but Zatai has teleported in through the backside, but doesn't have Meganar. We saw Meganar there about a second ago, so not going to have that for the next little while. And... It did get the heal out from Name. Not entirely sure whether that was even necessary. And this is how much investment they put on controlling the blue buff of the opposition. They're willing to burn a teleport, a five minute cooldown, without a Nar ultimate to just secure control over the top side of the jungle. And they were able to pick it up, so you've got to give them credit. That goes over to the uh, Udyr jungle, who is double the CS of Gragas. Zero, zero, and zero. But just destroying some creeps. Yeah, he's 15 CS behind the top laners, is Kakao. And these aren't lane swap top laners. This is a you know, top laners that have been duking it out in the bottom lane. Yeah, it certainly is. So we see Royal Club off the back of that, looking to pick up the dragon for themselves, of course, in the top lane. Zatai not having the teleport available. We saw that one already burnt, so they'll be able to grab that. Is a consolation prize at this stage because you feel the map is starting to slip out of their control. They regained some composure with some... Good ganks mid lane, but it is scary throughout the rest because Kakao, he's just going to continue to get tanky, and there really is a timer on just how tanky this lineup's going to be. I mean, Callista, the only real killable person, you have a Nautilus. He's going to be an absolute beast late yeah. game. You have an Udi, you have, for some reason, a Pickaxe Nah. Not to mention the Rise. It's the Frozen Mallet Nah, dude. <laughs> yeah, it it's is. That's like, like the best build. I honestly think it is. It's well, you think it's the best build, or you think it's a Frozen Mallet? No, I think it's a Frozen Mallet. Okay, I definitely yeah. do not think it's the best build. I was going to say, that doesn't sound like a Jake Spawn Tiberi build. Hasn't got a Trinity. It also. doesn't, or a Ghost Blade. <laughs> 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 oh, goodness me. But, Kid and Kitties, now down in this bottom side, we do have standard lanes breaking out now that a whole lot of these turrets have fallen down. Cola doing a nice job in this lane, but of course, he had a monopoly over it earlier on. Now completely evens a tie. Able to neutralize that one. Rookie is going to get shoved in just a little bit here. You can see needlessly large rod completed by Korn. He has a lot more extra damage to add to this lane. And Descent's going to land at a kitties here as well. The box comes down. A lot of upfront burst, but just comes out with a fate call. No worries there at all. Zero looking to try and pick up a death sentence here or there, but... Doesn't have it as the creep wave was coming in. And Zero actually flashed for that. So in the end, 
That's bad news for Royal Club. They used yeah. more. They used a teleport. They used a flash. They've given up mid lane turret. All of a sudden, Rookie doesn't care which champion is on. He just wants to kill the mid lane out of turret. Yeah, and getting it at 16 minutes as a rise is pretty impressive in its own right. So Pretty silly. Frozen Mallet completed by Zatai. There we are. Unique pickup. We'll see how that one works out. I actually, yeah, I knew that's what it built out of, but it didn't even cross my mind that that's what it could possibly be. Yeah. yeah don't worry. I'm here for your... Next level strategy spawn. Oh, yeah. As our observer also points out, the frozen mallet. Thank you. Just rub it in a little bit more. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness gracious. But zero and blank hanging out here. Oh, Descent's almost landing on a cacao, but not going to quite find it. The next level mind game's actually coming out. He didn't juke at all, and that's why it missed. Zero throwing that one. A little bit to the right, but Kakao, he's going to be completely fine. I'm interested to see how he gets onto this lineup. We've mentioned the disruption already, the Gragas, not to mention the fact that there is a Thresh on the opposition lineup. It's going to be hard for Kakao to get in. Might just have to look to peel for Kid, but he's already just so tanky. Nearly finished up that locket of the Iron Solari. I love that one. Oh, Zap going to come through on a Kakao just to try and deter but him off. doesn't take damage. One. No. My turtle stance is pretty strong here as Blank going to try to do some work onto Zatai as the body slam comes through. Flashes just out of the way of that explosive cast, which gets him to safety. Name though, in so much trouble. In fact, is dead as Kakao picks up the kill credit for that one. Just says, thanks, and is going to be on his way. Does have that Aegis completed here as well. Very, very tanky. Hemo Plague down in the mid lane as Rookie running as fast as he can with that ultimate running. Hemo Plague not going to do too much here, but Korn... With that ghost going to be able to at least pressure him off this minion wave, but Royal Club seems to be seem to be making aggressive moves, but not getting anything from it. Yeah, they're trying to force fights in situations that they can't really have it because there's just so much disengage that comes out of IG and IG. They just look like they have better understanding of what parts of the map they should be positioned around. They're able to grab all of the outer turrets now, and that will give them a sizable lead. What looked to be an early. Uh, Close early game has now turned into a three, nearly 4,000 gold lead for IG before the 20 minute mark. Yeah, it's pretty ridiculous here as Korn is going to possibly be able to answer with Zero's help here on the mid lane out of turret. Rookie tries his best to try and clear it out, but not going to happen this time. Evens the turrets, 3,000 gold now the difference as IG have that advantage, but Royal Club picking up the dragon is going to help even that one out just a little bit. And Hurricane is completed now for Kid, wanting a little bit more. AoE damage in the next team fight that's going to come through. Well, this time around, just recognizing that there is no armor on the lineup coming out of Starhorn Royal Club. So happy to go for the aggressive Hurricane build, even before he finishes up Bloodthirster. Of course, last game, he sat on the recurve bow and went for that last whisper to make sure he could shred through these tanky members, but not going to be needed this time. And you can say the same thing about Nama. He doesn't really need to go for a last whisper right now. There's a frozen mallet on the top lane. No, yeah. instead of a Ranjuan's Omen, and maybe that's because of... I don't Zatai. know what that's because of. It's because of Zatai. Just Zatai in general. Just Zatai things spawn. That's what he wants to do, and that's what he's going to do. Actually decides that he wants the Spectre's Cow as the next option here, as the cow is on the duty of, as far as picking up that Frozen Heart is concerned by the looks of things, unless that's going to be... The Iceborne Gauntlet, but I'm not entirely sure that's going to be the thing. Full tank Udia does seem to be just ridiculously hard to deal with. Cooldown reduction is just such a strong stat on Udia because he's able to get through all of those stances even quicker, increases his effective health pool, and he's gone into three members and will mosey out. Yeah, it doesn't even need to because our Rookie coming around here as well. Oh, Kitty's coming in through the backside. Kid looking for something here at the same time, but Zero... He's got a lot of attention. Kitty's going to get Fates called out of this one at the same time as Kakao finds a corn, but he does have the pool available. Going to flash afterwards as well as Blank going to body slam his way out, but Rookie picks up the kill. Corn does have the Zonya's Hourglass available, but it may not save his life here as Kid with a lot of damage. Doesn't have the rent. Super Mega Death Rocket sails on by, and Rookie picks up the kill. And Kakao just takes no damage whatsoever. Meanwhile, the Zetai one. gets the 1v1. That is the power of a frozen mallet. Boom, right there. Legitimized. Beautiful stuff. Nailed it, Zetai. I believe in you and your build path choices. I've lost my color caster, ladies and gentlemen. 
<laughs> so they'll able to pick up a turret and a red buff for it. They might even be able to rotate it to a dragon. All I'm going to say is the tie might have lived with a little bit more health if he had a Ranjuans. <laughs> Uh, but that's a Trinity Force Hecarim. He should be very, very strong. He died with his Igniter. Certainly did. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what I'm trying to argue here. Is the Dragon <laughs> is going to fall down for IG. That's their first of the game, evening out that particular objective. 6,000 gold now the lead at the 21-minute mark. That is quite sizable here. And a little bit dangerous. But Name, late-game insurance factor of that Jinx always going to be there, but... Is it going to be there against the likes of Callista, Rise, Kakao on the Udir, who's just going to get more and more difficult to deal with? Nar, as well as Nautilus, who in his own right is going to become unkillable? I, I, I honestly, oh, oh, he got it. He got it. Too easy. He had smite. Like, just smite it, dude. Besides, he doesn't want to. And Pink Ward going to go down here as well as the tie just has the run of the map. The intimidation factor of the frozen mallet just a little bit too much the Star and Royal Club lineup to deal with. So late game, Callista, <laughs> Callista <laughs> uh, versus Jinx. Jinx is a much better late game scaling carry, of course. As soon as she gets those three, four items, she just turns into an absolute monster. But as you mentioned, there's just such a tanky lineup coming through from IG. Even without <laughs> a correct item build, Zatai will eventually get tanky Thank when he picks up some he armor. Built the correct item build. And we're actually seeing, if we go through exactly what Udir is doing. He's maxing Phoenix. He's equally pointing the bear stance and the turtle stance afterwards. Nothing in Tiger so far. Really? I thought that was five points in total. What? Am I getting that wrong? I think you were getting it wrong, but let's have a look. No, it's turtle max second by the looks of things. Yeah, I think it's turtle and bear second. Interesting. The cow going to get zapped. Ladies and gentlemen, he did get hit by that zap. Don't be fooled as Blank is going to come in through that backside. Rookie is right in the back line now. Not exactly where he wants to be as Name picks up that kill now. Death sentence on the kid. And there are the chompers at the same time. Super Mega Death Rock on a full health target. Not exactly what you want. Kakao trying to tank up as best he can as Kitties falls down in the backside. Cola finally going to fall as well as Kid. Able to use that martial poise to get himself to safety. Corn just being untargetable and annoying in that front line. But will not have the pool available in time as the tie and Kid are ruling this fight. The triple kill for the mini -nar. And Kid able to destroy this turret. And man, the tie. Man, what just, just altered a creep wave. wave? No worries. <laughs> oh, please have a thought for solo accuser time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was ridiculous. Kid able to clear out this wave. Oh, this better be a replay of just the nah. No, it's not. And it's just Rookie getting caught out by a great explosive cast. He ends up going down. Trades Gragas' life. But look how tanky Kakao is in this. He's in the middle of it. He's taking turret shots as well. Cola, he flies into the team fight, does a lot of damage to Kitties, but Kakao, he's still tanking the whole team at this point, gets crit there, and does eventually fall down. But it was just all about how strong Zatai, as well as Kid, were. Kid able to take out Name. Zatai manages to pick up Vladimir as well, and he picks up the double off the backside. Yep, and then transforms to Meganara and Nars a creep wave. It was beautiful stuff. <laughs> Only wearing half of his jacket. Yep. That's all you need. That's all you need to carry a game. His left arm is colder than his right arm. <laughs> oh, if only he was playing Trinity, that would have been beautiful. <laughs> Absolutely beautiful as Kitty's going to clear out some wards. Kakao going to take down the Rift Scuttler here as well. 4-0-1 for the Frozen Mallet Nah here in the top lane. Beautiful stuff. Even on CS here with Cola, who's only going to get more and more difficult to deal with. But we do have a three-item kit on Callista, who's 5-0-6. The unsung hero... On this Callista, just I've able been to trying get to talk about it. You just I keep know, taking I... it back to the <laughs> nah. <laughs> yeah, I, I do apologize. It's a little bit ridiculous, but Rookie has been doing some work here as well. Hasn't got the upgraded sweeper yet, so won't get the Vision Ward placed there. Unfortunate. And IG looking to put some pressure around this barren area. They do have some barrels. Blank able to get some vision down here. Zero is trying to do his best to answer. This vision war. Kakao doesn't really care about champions no. at this point. Doesn't really care about much. I don't think. Does almost have that frozen heart completed. The combined cost of that one not going to be too much longer. As the 1, 1, and 8 
Udir is just doing whatever he wants this game. Royal Club pushing up this mid wave, looking a little bit like they don't quite know what their next move is really going to be as Kid and Kakao just hitting the Baron because they feel like it. Zero has discovered them there. Well, Kakao just takes no damage, so whenever they can, they're just going to jump in there, try and sneak it away, and they will repeatedly do it. Eventually, Starhorn's going to have to face check a little bit too far to stop that one going through, and that just might mean that IG have better positioning around this map. We mentioned the fact they don't really have a way to start a fight apart from a fantastic hook coming through from Nautilus, so that might be the answer. Just bait them into the Baron. No, we'll see whether they do go back to it. It's a tie. This is Banshee's Veil up here in the top side. Just going to keep clearing out these minions. Cola heading back to buy. Probably going to pick up that Frozen Heart on this Hecker. And we'll see whether he does have enough money. As he doesn't actually get found. Ooh, that was actually the scouting Super Mega Death Rock. Going to give away the fact that Sahan Royal Club have absolutely no vision of that barren area. And they're going to continue trying to push back. But you can see Sahan Royal Club just... They feel like they have so much pressure on them. Yeah, and they certainly do have the pressure. It's a 10,000 gold lead. They're only ten, 26 minutes in. It's going to be the Baron here because the tie. he's on the backside. Blank oh. needs to be careful. Needs to probably tank that. He wants to. Korn coming through with a Hemo Plague here as well. Kitty's on the backside. Cola looking for him here. There's the ultimate. Gets feared as well. Kid probably going to fall down. They trade AD carries, but the IG members able to get up and amongst it. And Blank going down very, very low. Korn with a lot of consistent damage. The Ty and Kakao are around here as well. It is going to be the Nautilus falling down. Kakao going low as Korn's going to use the pool and try and pick something up. But... That's Zatai just going off in this fight. Picks up the Gragas, picks up the horse as well. Korn trying to kite around, but Rookie secures the ace. Yeah, so they're able to get the ace for three. In the end, not a horrible team fight for Starhorn Royal Club, but that's a very, very fed rise now coming into this late game. He's got his Seraphs. Not to mention how big Zatai is. Somehow managed to piece together a 7, a 6-0-4. Score. As we see, they just felt like they had to force here. Corn flew in, and don't get me wrong, they were able to isolate Kid and get a relatively good team fight, but they just left Name to the Wolves. And Rookie, with a very impressive play over the backside, was able to pick up a kill. Had to eventually run all the way back around to try and rejoin the fight. But as we see in the bottom in live, actually, Zatai going extremely low. Yeah, he's going very, very low. Might not actually fall down there, actually, as you see in the bottom side. Actually, oh, doesn't get the jump. A uh, little bit little bit awkward there. Kitty's going to take a bit of damage there as well as Fate's Call's going to get him to safety. The Mega Nar that could, unable to get over that blue wall. It was almost a very cute play. Randuin's has been completed, though, as he enters the Death Chamber. That's a fair bit of extra money here for Royal Club because, of course, that uh, kill spree was taken down. You can see Zatai just very animated. Oh, I can't believe I didn't manage to flash over that wall. We see a little bit of normalcy returning to this game. Zatai, he's 10 seconds away still, but does have the teleport available, so Royal Club must have that in the back of their mind. Kakao, once again, taking no damage from anything. Oh, Blank looking for something. Explosive cast comes through, but just... It's Kid away from this one. IG taking this as a go button. Death sends to land on a Kitty who just explodes in the fight. Cola takes him down. Kakao now has the entire attention of all of Royal Club. And Zero and Korn trying to at least pressure away the rest of the members. Kakao still alive though. And Kid, the Hemo Plague's there. There's the ultimate to come through. Kid's gonna fall down to tie. Finds his way back into the fight. Kakao still running. Rampant in the back line. Rookie gonna take down Name. And Blank and Rookie are gonna fight this one out. I think I know who my money's on as Rookie's going to pick up that kill and Cola running headlong into the spiky-headed rise and he picks up a double. Yeah, so in the end, what a fight coming out of Invictus Gaming and it was just all about this Udyr. Don't chase him. At this point, it's almost like a singe. Just let him do his thing. Try and kill the other members. They were able to once again take Kit out. He's unfortunately the sacrificial lamb of this team comp as Korn really wants Kakao. But I think if he's proven anything, it's that he doesn't do much damage to him. Yeah, and if Kakao's done anything, he proves that he just is very good at taking damage and doesn't really care about anything else in this game apart from killing creeps and being annoying. Yeah, so let's take another look at this one. They hit the go button. Kakao's on the back line. Kitties gets absolutely blown up. And three members turn around and hightail it onto the full tank Udyr. 
They just continue. It's four members, actually. Zero got baited into it as well. And in the end, they made to pay. They isolate Zero. They isolate Corn. Kidding Rookie just able to do so much free damage. Tola flies in, and you see the amount of damage they do with the correct target prioritization, but it's just not there. It's all about IG having superior communication, being able to take these team fights consistently with just very, very good team play. That was a quadra kill on the end for Rookie. Confusingly. Because it said double, but I think he'd already got a triple prior. Very strange. Very, very strange stuff. He is 9-3-3, three three, though. So I believe that was quite a few kills he just picked up. Royal Club able to clear out some vision around this Baron. As the Callista is going to head back to base, possibly to pick up that Banshee's Veil. As we're just having a look at the items here as the Death Sentence is going to come through into the Zap here as well. The box comes down, the Chompers are there at the same time. Blank trying to get some work done. Hemo Plague onto Rookie, but Rookie takes down Zero there on the backside. Name gets altered, the Death Charge to come through as... Rookie's gonna fall down, Kakao, he's found Name though, and he's doing enough damage, the heal comes through. Kakao, the last whisper doing some work here from Name, he manages to kill him here, and the Jinx doing some work, getting excited on the backside of this fight, Kid trying to 1v4, we'll see whether it's gonna be enough, but the horse is doing work, and Kid just gets rampaged to death, Royal Club finally find a team fight they can win. Yeah, and there's no teleport, so... Uh, no teleport, there's no ward, so the teleport won't be able to come through from Zatai with the home guard boots. He's gonna just have to let this one fall down. And in the end, Starhorn Royal Club, they do the impossible, win a team fight, 10,000 gold down. They're gonna pick up a Baron. Yep, they win the team fight, pick up a Baron, they manage to get the objective. That is such the important thing here for Royal Club because they haven't been able to transition their wins into effective gold across the map. But 300 gold on every member, definitely going to take a chunk out of that gold advantage for IG. Yeah, so let's take a look at exactly what happened. The max range hook coming through here, landing on Rookie, that fed member on Rise. The perfect play, and you thought he might be tanky enough to survive this. But there was just too many members. They even use a Hema play just on him. Commit so much for taking down Rise, but in the end, definitely worth it because there was just no damage after that point. Callista too far away. And they just weren't able to kill anyone. Yeah, and Kakao sort of unable to do enough to Name there as well. Get some nice cheeky crits onto him as Kiddies is gonna fall down and just worked out like clockwork there. And What's a Callista going to do without any heal? Yeah, exactly right. So Kola, he's just able to handedly deal with this Callista at this point in the game. And you really have to think that Invictus Gaming, they missed a trick there. They were in the driver's seat. They were probably able to close out that game. They were the ones that were trying to bait the Baron repetitively, but Royal Club, they get a steal. And as well, I mean, Nami, he's got three items. That's four item Vladimir as well. Yeah, it certainly is. And you saw how much work that amp damage was doing, not to mention the fact nearly a four item top lane Hecarim. We have to talk about Kola quickly. He's managed to accrue himself a 7-4-5 score and is turning into that big carry top lane. So Ty trying to match it with a Trinity Force pickup, but you just saw in that last team fight, he's not that tanky. No, he's only got the two defensive items here in the Randuins and the Banshee's Veil. And we're starting to see a potential downside of the Frozen Mallet. Yeah, we certainly are. And Royal Club with that Baron buff now starting to push in. They're fully engaged the Hecarim split push, trusting that Cola now in the point in the match where he can start to deal with Zatai. Although it does need to go away as the Transform's coming through because Zatai with that Frozen Mallet can still cut extremely effectively in Mini Nair and then CC like a boss in Mega Nair. Especially now with that Phage coming through as well. Oh, he actually teleported into the top lane. What a smart move coming out of Cola. Yeah, he's got a massive creep wave here with the Baron buff as well. Able to take a free turret here. Out rotation available for Royal Club. They're possibly going to be able to pick up this inner in the mid lane as well. Definitely a successful Baron. Netting them a whole lot of extra... Oh my goodness, there's a Hemo Plague. The Onslaught of Shadows as well. What a wombo combo. The Super Mega Death Rocket tearing apart the members of IG as Rookie. He's now the focus. Death Sentence lands. Of course it does. And Rookie gets destroyed. Zatai now almost the only man available as Kakao doesn't have a whole lot of damage to offer to this fight. They're diving under the turret. Name makes short work of that one as he stands so far back to get his DPS down. And Royal Club, they may have just won this game. Yeah, it certainly looks to be the case. And this is why you do not give Zero Thresh 
Two hooks in a row win, two very important team fights, and they're just going for it. Yeah, really beautiful play. Kakao trying to be a nuisance here as a tie at full health. Descent's gonna land at the same time. Name, quite low on health, has to be a little bit careful here as he's trying to auto attack down these turrets. Gatling gun form is there as well as Kakao trying to do some work. Name going down very low. The heels there, they're rushing down the Nexus, but it's not gonna be enough. Korn trying to do some work, triple kill already for Kid as Korn gets knocked up, Jinx falls down and they secure the ace with half of the health of the Nexus remaining. Yeah, they're able to get the ace, Atlas, and what a turnaround team fight. Starhorn Royal Club went for broke. Now the 30 second death time is, it won't be the game for IG, but it means that this one will be delayed for a little bit longer. It will, and I mean, that might give IG the opportunity to take a long, hard look at what's been going wrong in these fights and possibly try and do something about it because Royal Club, it's not like they can just mosey up to that Nexus and kill it. They're going to have to get through the members of IG that have now all respawned. Apart from Kakao, he's got another five seconds. Yeah, so they're able to pick up the third dragon of the game as well. That's not really very relevant at this stage. With an open inhibitor, if this game goes another 12, 15 minutes, you would think that it would be very out of control. But they got it back to a 6,000 gold lead with those 2-1 team fights. They're able to break through everything in the base. Now the real pressure is on IG. They need to make sure that their vision control is on point. Push, push out this minion wave to get the minions acting as that scouting force through the middle of the map because otherwise, real potential for the Hecarim to fly into the base and even go for a sneaky backdoor. Potentially, potentially. And that is going to end up with eight turrets to five. So a lot of global gold now being picked up by Royal Club. That is definitely something worth talking about here as it's a six item rise. That is a very, very frightening prospect as the Abyssal Scepter has been completed as well as the Frozen Heart and the Void Star. But Rookie not going to be getting any stronger this game. Yeah, so only Elixir is going to come in through here. Also, nearly a maxed out Vladimir as well. Can upgrade into the Leandries, but from there, not really much else going on. I like the fact that he's gone for some HP Shred because there's not that much... MR coming through on the lineup of Invictus Gaming. And Name, he's gone for the Blade of the Ruin King over the Bloodthirster, prioritizing some attack damage, some extra kite for himself, the ability to shred through these HP tanks. Because, of course, we're not talking about a Thorn Mail on Zatai, we're talking about a Frozen Mallet. The only defensive stat it really has is health. That health, as we see the Sentinel coming across, foiling. The Starhorn plan of maybe a backdoor coming through. The count might have been caught there. Goes for reward. Able to get it. No hook coming from zero. And the pressure on a knife said, IG, if they win this, of course, move up into equal fourth. Royal Club need to win this to keep their playoffs hope alive. This is some very, very tense times. And the Royal Club members definitely with all of the pressure now. They've been given a window into this game. There are no Nexus turrets available, remember, ladies and gentlemen. Royal Club ca could potentially just go for broke and try and storm this base. They're looking to try and get a pick. They're waiting for this Baron to start becoming... Oh my goodness, the hook from Zero Kitties gets destroyed. Kakaunas needs to be careful as well, gets knocked into the team. But he's so tanky. Name as well. Look at the Nar under three members. Name is going to get destroyed in this fight. Does get taken down by Kakao, who's just so huge. Double kill for Cola though, as Kid and Rookie are both dead. And four members of Royal Club are gonna storm this Nexus. And Star and Royal Club, they've done it. They've managed to tie up this series with Invictus Gaming. Yeah, so they're going for a little bit of a defiant ending, but that Nexus will fall. And what a game out of Royal Club. They were down and out, 10,000 gold.